here with another any news Tensura old video. This one is how strong is Demon Lord Rimuru? His OP ultimate skills explained. Now, last episode, I think we covered the ascension of Rimuru as a Demon Lord. This is going to just talk about how strong he is. Let's go. In the world of Tensura, there exists an absolute unbendable rule. One that not only surpasses the very laws of nature, but also bypasses their very purpose completely. For Such those as? who are lucky enough to have reached a level in which this rule applies to them, well, these laws of nature would then become nothing more than unique cases to them. Mere fundamentals of the world that could simply be ignored or manipulated. So, if you haven't guessed already, the rule I'm talking about here is the one that dictates that ultimate skills are the ultimate power. <laughs> the unrivaled ability to treat the very laws of- No way. You're telling me things called the ultimate skills is the ultimate power? That's, that's the fucking rule? I thought there's something that goes beyond ultimate skills. I'm not asking for spoilers though. The ultimate power. The unrivaled ability to treat the very laws of nature as nothing more than trivial suggestions. Of course, the extent to which that's possible varies from person to person, but the key idea here is that an ultimate skill can only be countered by another ultimate skill. Okay. That's why any person who possesses one is considered to be extremely powerful. So if we sacrifice Bilzebub to counter Melt, Melt Slash, Melt Slash is basically the equivalent of an ultimate skill. Is that correct to assume? Or even beyond it? Because well, Melt Slash obviously still exists, but we don't have Bilzebub anymore if it's confirmed, right? Much to the point that even someone like Guy tends to hold them in very high regard. Guy Crimson. That said, the odds of coming into possession of one is extremely rare. One could even go through the whole process of evolving into a true awakened demon lord and Not still come out with no ultimate skills whatsoever. That's kind of so, lame. For Rimuru to end up with two right after his own and then go on to acquire two more almost immediately That's after. fucking crazy! Raphael, Lord of Wisdom. Bilzebub, Lord of Gluttony. Veldora, Lord of Storms. Uriel, Lord of Vows. They're always Lord of something, huh? For the ultimate skills? Well, that's probably one of the most rare events to occur, well, ever. We don't know how many ultimate skills anybody else possesses, but I think it's safe to assume that four is kind of on the high end. Okay. In any case. They are kind of keeping a secret. Have we seen Mirim? Mao Mirim use an ultimate skill. I don't think Dragon Nava is an ultimate skill, right? I don't think we have. She just used Dragon Nava once and she's been punching people out. I don't think we've seen Guy Crimson use anything other than manipulate the rooms at Waterprigus. I don't know what he was doing, but he was like manipulating like the, the physics of the room. Anyone else? Luminous obviously has some. I don't think Luminous used any. We have not seen any ones, or maybe it's never been actually declared. Maybe we have seen it, but we never knew it was actually an ultimate skill. But so far, it's, they're keeping it a secret for a lot of people. These are the pillars that support the foundations of Rimuru's strength as a demon lord. Whereas his previous self was OP due to all his unique skills, the demon slime Rimuru is even more OP due to his ultimate skills. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here. But first... Starting with the one that we're most familiar with. I thought we got an ad read here. Okay, no first, no Raid Shadow Legends today. First, we have the evolution of Great Sage, Raphael. The Lord of Wisdom whose very purpose is to fulfill the wishes of its master. When this ultimate skill had been created, a large majority of Rimuru's old skills were brought together under the management of this single one. So, even though a powerful, unique skill like Degenerate was sacrificed to create this one, its abilities of synthesis and separate were just moved to be part of Raphael instead. Basically, sacrificing basically means like, don't worry, don't worry, we're getting rid of that skill name, but the properties of that will be manifested and even better and combined into the ultimate skill. Making for a total of eight different components that go to- Holy shit, mind accelerate and analyze and assess, parallel operation, cast cancel. Cast cancel sounds OP, like animation cancel or something to be even more faster. All of creation, synthesis separate, ability adjust, crazy. Towards piecing together this conceptual intelligence is overpowered arsenal of abilities. That's Raphael. Now, a lot of these you will recognize as being similar to the subskills that we talked about from the previous Rimuru videos. While most still pretty much do the exact same thing, there are others that have had some pretty significant performance improvements. Such as? Mind Accelerate is the evolved version of Great Sage's Hasten Thought. Whereas Hasten Thought increased Rimuru's ability to perceive things by a factor of a thousand, Mind Accelerate bumped that factor up to a million. And which is even funnier? 
with the most recent episode of Rimuru vs Hinata Round 2 where Rimuru was gotten a new unique skill. What was it called? It's like Future Sight. I forget the exact naming of it. But now, yeah, it, it's like even better in this, right? We have Mind Accelerate, but that alone was not enough to kind of like overpower Hinata's strikes. So we begged the world and our desires to get like a better foreseeing skill. And now we have that over this, right? It extended the rate at which he could think to such an inconceivably rapid level of performance that whenever it was used, it made it seem as if time itself had stopped. Yeah, Combine this with attack. his other subskill of parallel operation, and we now have a Rimuru who's more than capable of using Analyze and Assess on multiple targets at this improved rate of a million. Oh, it's kind of like how Kumo has like schizophrenes in her head, parallel thought. So now you can like, each individual can use those skills on multiple people. It's like parallel threads. It's like multi, it's like parallel processing computers, right? Instead of one thread being bottlenecked with the resources, you have separate things going on where they're all independent and do their own thing. Allowing for the instantaneous scan of literally anything and everything. So, whenever you see those moments where Raphael is giving its analysis to Rimuru, you can usually assume that the entire encounter lasts for at most a fraction of a second. That's just how fast Rimuru and Raphael can process things now. One second to them now feels more like 277. <laughs> Cast Cancel does the same thing as it did before, effectively negating the need for a chant whenever magic's being cast. All of creation still allows for the comprehension of what's pretty much everything, then Synthesis and Separate remains completely unchanged. From Shizu! As for the final subskill of Ability Adjust, well, oh, as the only it. new subskill to emerge from Great Sage's evolution, not much has really been done to give us a proper picture of what it's actually capable of. Since it was used to assist with the establishment of Uriel, though, we can surmise that it grants Rimuru the ability to modify his existing set of skills. I don't understand Uriel so much. Raphael, I get it, super AI thing, right? Uh, we have, oh, the 270 seconds is 277 hours here. One second equals 277 seconds. It's 277 hours, all right. But um, over here, the Uriel, I don't really know, other than like it was used to like imbue Rimuru's blade with the like Tempest Flame, the black flame on his blade. I'm I d I don't really I don't really know. Whether they be skills belonging to his subordinates or any of the previous ones that he's had before, it seems that Rimuru can use ability adjust to modify, consolidate, and even evolve them, making it one of the more versatile assets in Raphael's arsenal. Nice. Now, the ultimate skill that Rimuru had picked up next was none Beelzebub. other than the evolution of Gluttony, Beelzebub. Lord of and Gluttony. just like how it was with Raphael, the unique skill Merciless was sacrificed to create this one, resulting in its soul-consuming ability to be passed on as a subskill. Before we get to that, though... Soul consumption. So, we still have that unique ability to just intimidate people, and then as soon as they lose the will to fight, we get the souls like that? Is, is that true? There were a few buffs given to the base effects of predation and stomach. Predation was given a significantly increased range of effect, and stomach can now store approximately 10 times more than it could before. The skill's just called stomach? That's so funny. It's not just like infinite storage or something, it's just like, yep. Stomach, just, just get in my belly. Had stomach not been enhanced like the way it had, then Rimuru wasn't even sure he would have been able to handle the strain of releasing Veldora from it. So, it was a crucial upgrade that you'll soon see had actually played quite a big role. As for the other two base effects of Mimicry and Isolation, the former can still replicate the appearance and skills of any analyzed target, while the latter continues to recycle any sort of materials deemed unnecessary during an analysis. Corrosion provides assistance it sounds like isolate is basically like ex like your body taking in nutrients and then pissing out the excess, right? That's what this one is. Materials deemed unnecessary during an analysis. Yeah, you're just pooping Corrosion it out. provides assistive decomposition effects during any instance of predation. Then soul consumption is just the new name given to merciless. merciless. Yeah. So despite merciless having been sacrificed for Beelzebub's creation. The ability to reap the souls of those who have Fine, lost guys. their will to fight is now just integrated under Beelzebub's subskill soul consumption. Now, if we can confirm that Beelzebub has been sacrificed to defeat Hinata's Melt Slash, maybe Beelzebub has now undergone a transformation and an evolution and turned into an even better skill, guys. Is that too much cope? I'm just really sad that we lost Beelzebub, or most likely lost it. Cause it's like the foundation of everything. But now with all the talk about the sacrifices and how it adopts into something else, when it obviously evolves the skills, right? It'd be cool if it's like ultimate skill? Nah. 
because of the clash of an ultimate Lord of Gluttony versus the Melt Slash, it has now evolved into something even fucking better. Like, that was something Tensura could definitely do, right? While keeping the OP powers. Now, where Beelzebub brings forth something new is through the establishment of the subskill food, food chain. chain from the merger of what was previously Gluttony's receive and provide. Remember, Receive was the ability for Rimuru to claim Gifts. any of his subordinates' abilities as his own, while Provide allowed for the transfer Gifts, of his yeah. skills down to subordinates who were compatible. That being the case, it makes sense then that Food Chain does a more efficient combination of both. For any monster who shares a connection with Rimuru, all skills in their original form would any connection? become available to him. Kind of like a Path of Exile skill tree but with infinite unlock points. Any connection? Does they have to be named? Do we have to, uh, like... What about, like... Fuse and the Idiot Adventure Trio with Princess Eden. They don't have connections. It's the people he names, right? That's the connection. And also a lot bigger. With all his subordinates having received gifts from the Harvest Festival, there was a whole new plethora of skills that needed to be managed by Raphael and its ability adjust. You see, Raphael is subject to food chain at the same level that Rimuru is. So that meant all those skills could be streamlined and optimized in whatever way Raphael deemed best. If there was ever a situation in which Rimuru found himself in trouble, then he could simply rely on Raphael to suggest a plan of action with whatever skills were optimal for the situation. It was the only way Rimuru could make use of Food Chain and the vast amount of skills it provided. As for how it works for those under Rimuru, well, that same condition of compatibility is still required, making it a much more beneficial skill for Rimuru than it is for really anyone else. Fuck you, Phobio! Now, just like how Raphael had brought forth the creation of Beelzebub, it was Beelzebub that had allowed for the creation of Rimuru's next ultimate skills. Veldora. The first of which had stemmed from Veldora's resurrection. Beelzebub is the reason why Veldora and Uriel is a thing? It helped it. Allowed for the creation of Rimuru's next ultimate skills. The first of which had stemmed from Veldora's resurrection. Yeah. When Rimuru had released Veldora's spiritual body from the confines of his stomach, there were these lingering remnants of his essence that were left behind remains of his spiritual body that could be consumed by Beelzebub. So, okay. after those remains were absorbed and analyzed, not only was a soul corridor established between himself and Veldora, but the ultimate skill- Soul corridor? I feel like I've heard this term before. Almost sounds like something from Data Live. The ultimate skill Veldora was created from it as well. Lord of Storm, Rimuru what does it had do? absorbed small pieces of Veldora, then used the link between their soul to transform some of this true dragon's power to his own. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what exactly this soul what does it do? is, well, it's pretty much the direct intangible pathway between one soul and another. It's just a connection between two souls, that's it, okay. A connection that signifies a deepened bond between two people. Okay. So, what was essentially Veldora's heart was now linked to Rimuru's soul. So, ultimate skill Veldora is basically this connection that we share, right? Between our souls, therefore, whatever is Veldora is mine, whatever is mine is Veldora, so we have access like that. So if we use ultimate skill Veldora, yeah, literally soulmates too, right? Not sworn friends, soulmates, but like, we can borrow Veldora's power like that through ultimate skill Veldora? I don't think it's been actually ever used, right? I don't think they've really explained this shit, to be honest. Resulting in all his memories and experiences to be gathered in the mind of Rimuru. Kind okay. of like some sort of external backup. The reason why this is important is because it ties into the subskills of this new Veldora ultimate skill. Summon Storm Dragon. Restores, restore, we can heal. And Storm Dragon might- Summon Storm Dragon is just literally summon Veldora. Mainly the duo of Summon Storm Dragon and, and Restore Storm Dragon. And heal him, I guess. The former allows Rimuru to call forth Veldora whenever he wants. Yeah. Whether it's the Veldora that's in his dragon form, or the new Veldora that's in his spiritual one. And this is all part of ultimate skill Veldora right now. Summon and restore Storm Dragon. Rimuru can summon one single Veldora at his sole discretion. One Veldora, The please. reason I say one is because there's no limit to the number of times this skill can be activated, but there is a limit to the number of Veldoras there can be. Yeah. Only one dragon can be- Is it possible to have more clones of Rimuru produced and have more- Veldra magicules to be implanted into those clones so that we can have a clone army of Veldras, therefore we can infinitely summon more Veldras as our soldiers. Is that, that maybe be present at any given time? 
If another is attempted to be summoned, then the Cancel? first will disappear in order to make room for the other. Okay. As for what makes this entire ability possible, well, that's actually mostly due to the passive effect of the second subskill. Because Restore Storm Dragon allows Veldora's memories to be copied over to Rimuru. How much memories does it get copied? I wonder. Because, like, do we have all the history? Do we even know who the hero is? Because I want to understand the hero sealing Veldora a long time ago when it was going crazy. Does Rimuru have memories of that? That meant that if Veldora was to ever die, Rimuru could easily bring him back to life with an exact replacement. <laughs> That's OP. I know that may sound a little bit confusing, but the key thing to understand is that this clone is just a vessel. Yes, it does house Veldora and serve as his material body, but what we see is nothing more than a clone he's currently inhabiting through Got his it. soul corridor with Rimuru. Got it. It's a proxy, right? This body Veldora that we see, it is literally just a vessel, just a carcass. It could die, a new Veldora can be summoned. This is fucking ridiculous though, huh? Rimuru. Holy the shit, The real Veldora currently resides within Rimuru's soul. Which means that the current Veldora right now in the clone, is it even close to the power level? of what real Veldora is. Surely the clone right now, it's limited in power and it's completely nerfed to what the true strength of a storm dragon is, right? It's gotta be, right? Well, a reproducible backup anyway. So regardless of what happens to this newly provided body, Veldora can always be given another, essentially making him immortal so long as Rimuru continues to be alive. OP. In any case, this pretty- What happens when Rimuru dies? Veldora dies. I'm surprised during the Melt Slash conflict, Veldra was not just like magically summoned in to somehow like counter Hinata's attack. Just like how Medium Strike and the end of season two, right? Veldra was summoned like that. <laughs> it was some, hey, we can we can get Veldra back. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. There's an infinite amount of Veldras we can summon, but there's only one of us, man. Pretty much explains the fundamentals of how Summon Storm Dragon works as well. It's not like Rimuru is physically teleporting Veldora to his exact location, but instead it's more like he's replacing the current Veldora with a new one. One that's an exact copy okay. of the real Veldora from Rimuru's soul. Now, the third and final- So it's a basically a new vessel, we just disappeared the old vessel and then a new vessel shows up and it's not a transport of bodies, but just literally just, alright, old one go, new one back, but they all still share the same mindset, yeah. Final sub-skill to come from the ultimate skill Veldora is complete unprohibited Storm. access to the Storm Dragon Magic Archive, okay. a much simpler ability than the other two. All this meant for Rimuru was that he could now use powerful spells like Dark Lightning, Death Calling Wind, and Storm of Destruction. Have we used any of these? Death Calling Wind? Storm of Destruction? I don't remember. All of which are more powerful in comparison to what he previously had. Okay. Moving on to the final ultimate Uriel. skill in Rimuru's arsenal now. What we have is pretty much the amalgamation of all the skills from Food Chain. I straight up don't know what Uriel does. I know it's the name of an angel, but all I know is that it helped imbue the dark flames onto Rimuru's blade against Hinata, but what else does it do? Remember, with the Harvest Festival having gifted what was potentially hundreds of new skills to Rimuru's subordinates, that meant they were all being gifted to him as well. Food Chain had provided this massive influx of unique and extra skills that he'd never even seen before. Of course, Remuru couldn't possibly sift through all of them himself, so instead he just decided to hand the task off to Raphael. The result of <laughs> which was the massive consolidation of all of them into the ultimate skill Uriel, the Lord of Vows. Not Uriel, it's Uriel. A skill that serves as both the manifestation and proof of the bond that ties Remuru to all the others. Okay. To explain this even further. Raphael had set up unlimited imprisonment as a base, then used ability adjust to merge that base with everything else. So, whether it be his own personal remaining extra skills, okay. or any of the unique skills currently available to him through Food Chain, all were combined under the ever-expanding umbrella of Uriel, specifically the subskill known as Law Manipulation. That sounds While OP. this does provide him access to every skill obtained via Food Chain, there's a whole nother side to it that provides even more. One that allows for complete control over every magical and scientific phenomenon. What? This could be anything from the four major elements and the laws that govern them, all the way to the magicules in the air and the spells produced by them. Literally all matter or magic reality particles, bending. along with fundamental properties like heat, inertia, and gravity, could now be freely manipulated by Rimuru whenever he wanted. This sounds very OP at a conceptual level, but we just haven't really seen it really in, in like a physical application, but it sounds like he just has access to... 
all of his family skills and stuff like that, but also uh, law manipulation, element control, total control over fucking everything. That's why even imbuing our sword with the, you know, flame is one application of the elements bending, I guess. Making this specific subskill one of the most valuable assets currently available to him. Even if you set aside the godlike ability to control pretty much everything, having optimized access to what's now over a dozen different unique skills is definitely something you don't want to overlook as well. Another aspect of Uriel that's just as OP is the Spatial Domination subskill that had taken over for Spatial what Motion. Is this? It's a new and improved version that works much more efficiently as well as requires significantly less setup. Unlike how Spatial Motion required a gate to link two points in space together, Spatial Domination required only a thought. So oh, so we can just easily AoE port people. Now it doesn't have prep in here, we're just fucking thinking it just happens. As long as the location was perceivable with Universal Detect, Rimuru could transport himself there almost immediately. Can he transport his nation to a different nation? Are we limited by just bodies? What about our entire land? It was the closest thing to instant teleportation that anyone could get to. Now, considering that Uriel was created with unlimited imprisonment as its base, it makes sense then that this unique skill would turn out to become one of Uriel's subskills, thus providing Rimuru with the exact same power that had once sealed away Baldora. With the exact same power that was, does we have access to the hero? Let's say, 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 say that again. Say that again. Subskills, thus providing Rimuru. Now it has to do with the base of this being. Unlimited imprisonment and how that associates to hero power. Considering that Uriel was created with unlimited imprisonment as its base, yes. it makes sense then that this unique skill would turn out to become one of Uriel's subskills, thus providing Rimuru with the exact same power that had once sealed away Baldora. Holy shit! In terms of what it actually does, o -o only the seal. We don't have the hero's powers or anything. Because Velder was sealed like that, and we use unlimited imprisonment or some shit like that, and because that's a base of Uriel, we have the same sealing thing, I think, yeah. Well, it basically traps any target within a complex number of spatial dimensions. And when I say complex, I don't mean that it's too complicated for us to understand, but instead that the target would literally be encased within a dimension of an imaginary number. A plus That's what it means B when it I. says it's a complex a is a real number, B equals a real number, I equals imaginary units. At B, guys. Math. Dimension. So, with the target being trapped inside what can only be described as a mathematically imaginary place, any access or interaction to the real world would be impossible. Destroyed through Their pure Their plane math. of existence simply wouldn't coincide with our own. Resulting it's in the target's skills being useless regardless of how strong they were. What the fuck? We can just seal people. Like, like we can just straight up seal people and... Oh, fun timestamp here. This Uriel is Ananis' favorite ultimate skill. And honestly, the more I hear about Uriel, I'm starting to realize that Uriel might be like one of the most OP skills that we have. They're all fucking OP. They truly are. But something about Uriel is just... On a conceptual level... The law manipulation, like, you're just omnipotent, you're just a fucking god. And I guess that's why the anime is not really highlighting this broken-ass skill. This, this, not early in the game, but, you know, we just got, you know, Bilzebub and Raphael. And even Storm Terror Veldera stuff was not even that well explained in the anime, but we did see applications of it. But Uriel is something that's not been discussed in depth in the anime. That being the case, unlimited imprisonment was a barrier in which escape from the inside was wholly impossible. That's fucking busted. Last but not. What limits us from using this onto, let's say, even people like Guy Crimson? I would never want to use it, but let's take Guy Crimson, one of the most OP peoples in this universe, right? Let's say we fucking just lock him up. Is that just possible? Surely it's not as simple as just saying seal and you're just sealed forever, right? You, you can't just do that, right? At least, the final subskill of Uriel was the absolute defense of Universal Barrier. Unlike what? how multi-layer barrier required each resistance to be imbued individually, Universal Barrier simply did it automatically. Yes, the barrier was still technically multi-layered in nature, but the whole process of setting it up was handled by Raphael now. Basically crazy barrier but powers yeah, on top of that. That's every ultimate skill that Rimuru currently Busted. has now. As I'm sure you noticed, there's a lot of different things working in tandem to produce these ultimate powers that we see in action in the anime. With Raphael being at the forefront, every other skill is being used at full capacity to provide Rimuru with anything and everything. I think Raphael still is the most quote-unquote useful one.
but Uriel definitely sounds fucking the most OP, maybe? He may not be as strong as Melamurgi yet, but he's certainly taking his first steps Rimuru towards toes. something I would personally consider to be akin to godlike. Alright. Now, before I go, I do want to mention that I've started streaming a bit more often on Twitch, so if- Guys, if he ever streams, go to his channel and cover that shit. And it's so interesting how we're watching this ultimate skill. And guys, go give him a like, right? Give him a like and sub to his channel if you haven't. These always give such comprehensive details on the stuff that we're watching. But, um, the thing that is special about this is how we're talking about the ultimate skills and the sacrifices of skills. And it doesn't just go away. It kind of carries carried on to the new form of that skill, right? Merciless turning into Bilzebub and a sub-skill under that, so we still have it under like soul consumption. Bilzebub right now, we're supposed to believe that it's been sacrificed against Hinata's Melt Slash, but now does there have potential for Bilzebub to then evolve combining with Hinata's holy properties? I don't know, I'm just trying to like think about how the story's gonna progress with Bilzebub apparently being sacrificed, but that's for, that's an answer we're gonna get on the next episode, hopefully.